it's Mr. Stanley here. Welcome to Children's Church. I'm so excited that you have joined me today. We're going to get started the way we always get started with a time of prayer requests and praises. So I want you to think through your last week. And guys, I want you to think of anything that happened to you that made you really happy or really excited. And in a minute, I'm going to get you to say that out loud. And we're going to tell God thank you for those things. I also want you to think over your last week, and I want you to think if you know anyone who was sick or who is sad or who is hurting right now. And in a minute, I'm going to get you to say their names out loud, and we're going to pray that God will watch over them and take care of them. And then think through your last week. Is there anything that frustrated you, anything that made you sad or worried or anxious? And in a minute, say that out loud, too, and we're going to ask God to help you as well as we open with prayer. So I'm going to give you about 10 to 15 seconds of silence now to say those things aloud, and you can start doing that now. All right, great job, kids. I couldn't hear what you said, but guys, I promise you, God heard each and everything that you mentioned. And we're going to lift those things up to God now in prayer. So if you'll join me, if you'll put your hands together, bow your heads, close your eyes, we're going to go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we get to come together here on this video and we get to talk about you, God. We get to pray to you right now. We thank you for the many things that you've given us in our lives that make us excited and that make us happy, God. We thank you for those things. God, we pray for the people in our lives who are sick or sad or hurting. We pray that you would take care of them, that you would watch over them, Lord, that you would heal them if they're sick, God. And God, I just pray for every kid that's watching, if they're struggling with something, if something's making them anxious or angry or worried, I pray that you would help each and every child with those things, God. We pray that you'd be with us now in Children's Church. Help us to have a lot of fun and learn a lot about you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Great job, kids. All right, we just opened with prayer, and now we move on to another prayer. We always start Children's Church by praying two times in a row. Now, the next prayer has a special name. Do any of you know the name of our next prayer? You can say it out loud. I think some of you probably said it. It's the Lord's Prayer. Prayer. All right, we pray this prayer every single week here at church, and the reason we do that, the reason this prayer has a special name called the Lord's Prayer is because when Jesus was here on earth, the disciples, his best friends, they came to Jesus one day and they said, Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? And Jesus taught them to pray using this prayer. And so we believe that if Jesus taught his disciples to pray using this prayer, we can learn to pray by praying this prayer. As well, So we pray it every single Sunday, and if you know it, I want you to pray along with me. It starts our Father. If you don't know it, just listen this week, and as you come to Children's Church more and more, you're going to memorize this, chair we're, this prayer because we're going to say it over and over and over. So let's go to God again now in prayer. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray to God. It starts our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Great job, kids. All right, for our Bible lesson today, we're going to continue to tell these stories about Jesus and Jesus' life, all right? And if you've been with us, you know we've talked about Jesus calming the storm, Jesus and Peter walking on water, Jesus healing a blind man, and other stories. But today, we're going to be talking about one of the really big miracles of Jesus. And the story starts a, the same way that a lot of our stories start. Jesus had been in a city. And he had been teaching people about God. He had been telling people how much God loved them. He had been healing people who were sick. He had been performing miracles. And it's around, it's probably a little bit after lunch. And Jesus has been doing this all day up until that point in this city. And Jesus gets kind of tired. 
And he's looking at his disciples and he notices his disciples look a little bit tired too. They've been doing this day after day, all of these things teaching people about God. And so Jesus tells the disciples, let's get in a boat. And for once, they get in the boat and a giant storm doesn't come, right? I've told you that. Normally when you get in a boat, bad things happen in the Bible. Not this time. He says, let's get in the boat and let's sail down the coast and let's find a really quiet spot where no one is and let's rest for a while. We could all use some rest. And so they do. They get into the boat, Jesus and his disciples, and they start sailing down the coast looking for a place to rest where there's no people. But the people that Jesus had just been teaching, they see Jesus get in the boat. And some of them see the boat go and they say, let's follow Jesus. Let's follow the boat. We don't have a boat, but let's walk on the shore. Let's keep the boat in sight. Let's follow the boat. And they start following the boat. They walk down the shore. And as they walk, they meet other people. And they say, Jesus is in that boat. If you want to see him, if you want to hear him, keep, come on. Let's, let's keep walking and following the boat. So their, their number gets bigger and bigger and bigger as they walk. So that when Jesus finally finds what he thinks is a quiet spot. The disciples and Jesus pull the boat to shore, but when they get off the boat, there are a lot of people waiting on them. The Bible says there were 5,000 people waiting on them. Okay, so let me put that into perspective as best I can, because that's a weird number, especially for kids. It's hard to picture 5,000. So what I did, I got online, and I looked at the number of kids that go to Bluff Park Elementary School. I know a lot of our kids that are watching this probably go to Bluff Park. Uh, but even if you don't, this is going to make sense. Bluff Park Elementary School has 661 kids in it. So on a day when all the kids are at Bluff Park, there's 661 kids in the building that is Bluff Park Elementary School. All right? The number of people on this shore would be like 7th Bluff Park Elementary School all filled with 661 kids. That is a lot of people that are waiting on Jesus. And it may have even been more, all right? Because something weird they did in Bible times when a large crowd was there and they counted people, for whatever reason, we don't do this anymore. They only counted the men. And we're pretty sure there would have been kids there. We know there were kids there because a the kid's going to show up in this story in a little bit. And there would have been women there. So it was probably even more than seven Bluff Park Elementary schools filled with 661 kids each. There were a lot of people. There were people as far as Jesus could see. And remember, Jesus and his disciples were looking for a place to rest. They, the whole point of going to this place was so they wouldn't have to be around people. But when Jesus gets off the boat and he sees all these people who have come to hear him and to see him, he decides to stay. He decides to stay and continue to teach them about God, to heal people there who are sick, to tell those people, all those people, how much God loves them. All right, and so Jesus does that, and he does it for the rest of the day, and he does it, and he does it, and he does it, and it starts to get late in the day. And the disciples start to notice these people are getting hungry. They didn't plan on coming here and having a picnic. They didn't bring any food with them. They just started following Jesus' boat as it went through the water. So nobody has any food, and they're all starting to get hungry. And so the disciples come up to Jesus, and they say, Jesus, it's getting late. All these people are getting hungry. We can't feed them. You probably need to send them home. We need to kind of wrap things up for today. All right? Jesus does something weird. Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, why don't you feed them? And the disciples probably looked at Jesus like he was a little bit crazy. All right? Because remember, there's tons of people and the disciples don't have any food. Nobody brought food. And he goes, Jesus, how in the world are we going to feed all these people? We don't have any food. And even if we did, it would cost like half of our yearly salary, half the money we make in a year to feed all these people. We can't feed all these people. And Jesus says, go find any food that you can find. Go, go ask the people if anyone will give any food and bring it to me. And so the disciples start going around and asking everyone, do you have any food? Jesus needs it. And they go from person to person, and nobody has food. They finally find, the Bible says it's a little boy. 
We don't know how old he is, but it says a little boy. And this little boy had two fish and five loaves of bread. And the disciples asked the boy, can we have this food? Jesus needs it. And the boy gives his food. So they take these two fish and these five loaves of bread that the little boy had given them. They take it to Jesus and they say, this is all we can find. Now let me ask you, if you go to Bluff Park Elementary, all the kids that are at Bluff Park Elementary, just one Bluff Park Elementary, would five loaves of bread and two fish feed those people? Not even close. And there's way more than that. It's like seven Bluff Park Elementaries, all full of kids. All this crowd. But Jesus says, I'll take it. And he takes the two fish, the five loaves of bread. And the Bible says, he lifts them up and he prays to God. And he asks God to bless this food. And he has all the people sit down. And he tells the disciple, cut it all up and start handing. Now, again, there's not enough food. We know that. There's no way that little food can feed all the people. But as they start handing it out, they're just, they, they keep being able to hand it out. They think they should be out, but every time they stick their hand in the basket to give people food, there's more and more and more food. Jesus multiplied the food, multiplied those two fish and five loaves of bread so that every single person there was able to. To eat. And the Bible even says not only was everyone able to eat, they were full when they were done eating. Not only that, but at the end, the disciples went and started picking up the leftover food, and they filled 12 baskets full of leftover pieces of fish and bread. Guys, could anyone else do that but Jesus? No, nobody else could do that but Jesus. Jesus fed over 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. And that's the end of the story. Was that a good story? Guys, I love that story. I love that it teaches us that, again, Jesus is the Son of God. Only Jesus was able to do something like that. And guys, normally at the end of the story, I tell you to focus on Jesus. What can we learn from Jesus in this story? What, how can we be like Jesus in this story? I'm going to do something a little different. Instead of focusing on Jesus, this week, I want you guys to think about that little boy. All right, that little boy out of this whole big crowd, people as far as you could see, that little boy seemed to be the only person there that had any food. Everyone was hungry, the Bible says. And this little boy had food. And the disciples come and say, would you be willing to give your food because Jesus needs it to feed everyone here who's hungry? That little boy could have said, no. This is my fish, my bread. I'm the only one that thought to bring food. I'm going to keep it so that I'm not hungry, right? But does he do that? No, the little boy chooses to give his food to Jesus so that Jesus can help everyone who's hungry. And Jesus does do that. But guys, I know from reading the Bible, from this story, from other stories, from Bible verses, Jesus wants us to be like that little boy. Guys, when we see people in our lives who need help, Jesus wants us to help him. In this story, the people needed help because they were hungry. And the little boy chose to give it to Jesus so that he could help them. Guys, in your lives, you're going to meet people who need help, that are hungry. And I know Jesus wants us to find ways to feed them. You're going to meet people in your life who are sad. Jesus wants us to find ways to help them and make them happy. We've done here at church at Christmas time. We sponsor families who don't have quite as much money as some of us do. So they don't get as many Christmas presents. And we see that. They need help because we want them to have more Christmas presents, so we help them. There was a great example of this in the last week. A lot of you heard there was a tornado in Fultonville in northern Birmingham. And some people lost portions of their house, houses or their houses, and they needed help to get by until they could get back on their feet or find some place to stay. And so I know our church did a food slash bathroom type stuff drive. So we collected toilet paper, paper towels, canned foods. Um, I just looked at a room upstairs that had started to fill up with this stuff that people of our church knew that there was a need. There were people who needed these things and they went and bought these and we're going to take those to those people. Some of your schools did that, had drives at your school where you could collect those things and bring them in. Again, it's people seeing people who need help and finding ways to help them. And so guys, I want to encourage you to do that in your life, to be like the little boy in this story. 
If you know someone in your life right now that need help, needs help in whatever way, I want to encourage you to try and find a way to help them, all right? And maybe you don't know anyone now, because I promise you, throughout your life, things are going to happen like that tornado, or you're going to meet people who are sad. You're going to meet people who, for whatever reason, are hungry. And when you encounter people like that, when you encounter people who need help, I want to encourage you to be that, like that little boy and find ways to help them. All right? Can you do that for me? If you can do that for me, give me two big thumbs up. Good job. When we do those things, when we help people, it makes Jesus happy. And we become the people Jesus wants us to be. All right? Great job, kids. That is Children's Church today. Come back next week, and we're going to do another really cool story about Jesus. So let's close in prayer. Put our hands together, bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this story of Jesus feeding 5,000 or more people and this little boy who offers his food so that Jesus can help those people. Help us to be like that little boy. When we see people who are hurt, people who are sad, people who are in need, help us to help them. Give us the strength to help them. Give us the ability to help them. Give us the heart to help people who are in need, God. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for this day, God. We pray that you would help us as we go through this week. Lead us, guide us, show us the way you would have us go. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, kids, I'll see you next week.